How many people are here because they want to start a digital marketing agency, they have a digital marketing agency, or they're trying to expand a digital marketing agency? A little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and everyone's in their own niche. You know, you've got the Facebook marketing niche. What's your guys' side of the business? We're a little bit of business, business services, so accounting, marketing, and a little bit of everything. So we're okay. trying to find what extra stuff we can have. I got you. So, that, that's good news because I didn't really prepare to talk about how to make an excellent digital marketing agency. What I wanted to do most for most of this was tell you about some of the amazing resources that helped me learn everything that I know today because I have only been doing this for about one year, um, at least seriously. So the short version of how we started, <laughs> I mean, I've been around, but now you know, I started taking it seriously about a year business. ago and just started learning. So let me tell you about our agency. This is me, by the way. Uh, feel free to follow me on the Twitters and I will follow you back. Yeah, we're very active on social. We, we love chatting online. So our journey is uh, in summer 2014, we got our first customer and we were really, you know, not, I was playing poker professionally at the time and someone just needed our help and I, uh, well, needed my help and I was like, I can help you, you're doing all these things wrong and I, I could just see it in their business, you know, like that they had just been falling behind. It was a casino and they uh, were getting crushed by their competitors because their competitors were advertising online, their competitors were advertising locally, the competitors had a, a better website and web presence and, and they just knew nothing about it. So they said, can you help me? And I said, yes. And we started doing some work for uh, really bad website development is what I'd call it and some online marketing stuff. And that's when I kind of thought to myself, we, you know, this is something I could do. I was looking for my exit from that industry. And, uh, and I realized I had a lot of... How did they find you? Uh, I literally played poker at their casino every day for like months. Well, actually that casino I played like three times a week uh, for months. They find you and you decided maybe this could be a business, so did you decide to have a business and then... Yeah, we, you know, we just, I was talking with their general manager about it and I was, I was just, yeah, you guys have nothing, you're not doing anything. You need to be more active and they're like oh well we have someone that does this and I was like no but what they were doing was they were posting these really really spammy pictures on Twitter to a hundred people and and obviously nobody's looking at them like literally nobody is looking at them and nobody's engaging with them and all that stuff so so they were doing nothing they were they were doing what I see quite a lot which is uh, feel it, you know, spinning your wheels and, and feeling like you're doing something, but not getting any forward trajectory because you have the wrong strategy. And so, um, and, and so that's why, you know, we gotta always implement the right strategies. In poker, this is especially true, and in business, also especially true. So we were working from home. I brought my co-founder in with me, who did some of the graphic design side of things and branding. What? I came in later. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere down here, down later? In spring. Um, I started testing a bunch of tools online and you know became involved in digital marketing. I saw a lot of ability for this. I mean, you've been doing it for longer than me, right? Like Renee, you as well. And a, and a lot of people have been around there and I, I, I noticed like there were a lot of people in this space that were very smart, making a lot of money and there was a lot of opportunity and because things were changing every day, that really encouraged me to jump in. Uh, so after getting the first customer, I was like, I'll build a website for ourselves, also a pretty terrible website. We started experimenting on our client's website and, uh, and seeing how we could get more traffic to their store, get more people to click on their call button, click on their location button, and stuff like that. And we started, uh, we became Hootsuite certified, and I started basically subscribing to all of the pop-ups uh, that you see on all the marketing pages. <laughs> So that it, that it began at that point. So yeah, okay, got my co-founder and started the business entity in November. Uh, got to open the bank account, obviously. Then we found some more clients randomly uh, on Craigslist. It was, it was actually really surprising. We haven't even found anyone on yeah. Craigslist since then. But uh, you can put up free posts on Craigslist and it does work occasionally. So it's a 
a little bit of a way to go if you have services, SEO, copywriting, uh, graphic design, stuff like that. A lot of people are looking for services there. Uh, and we also started going to a lot of events and stuff like this. We decided we want to be closer to the tech scene in San Diego. Also, we were going to apply to uh, go to Evo Nexus, and so we moved downtown. And I started kind of training myself, getting more certificates. And we found some more clients. Uh, through poker, I met a guy who liked to invest in companies, and he uh, we sat down in his spa after eight or nine cocktails, and <laughs> I gave him a pitch, and <laughs> he gave me a hard counter offer, and we settled the next day. <laughs> and so we got a we got a backer. It was a, maybe a slightly unconventional way of doing it, but a real way that you you do business with people you know, uh, and and he trusts me, you know, to run this to run our company because we knew each other through experiences in poker. Really, sounds uh, like that's how it always happens. <laughs> well, it's always in a hot tub. Yeah, yeah. That's how, I mean. That's how I want to do all my that part. <laughs> um, and so we applied to Evo Nexus, which is a tech incubator here in San Diego. If you guys don't know, and we got rejected because we're not a tech company. And uh, we really thought, you know, we had a lot of ambitions and ideas. And I mean, I'm talking. This is seven, eight months ago, nine months ago, and what we thought we were going to become and be. Uh, you know, 22 Social might be able to get into Evo Nexus because you actually have, you know, a platform. But our company is a services business with no plans at, at a growing technology right now. And I think a lot, that applies to a lot of people in the room probably. And, and, and I think uh, understanding, you know, the difference between having technology and using technology uh, are, are two different things. So we learned a lot there. And we got rejected. It was a, it was a fun experience. In spring, our... Uh, our eyes were opened because we went to social media marketing world and everyone here, you know, if you own a small business, if you need to get leads, uh, g generate customers online, I would, I would start with social media marketing world. Thus far, it's been the best conference I've ever attended. I should also mention because of my past, I never attended a conference before social media marketing world. I had a couple since then, but it is really phenomenal and you can learn a lot there. They, they teach you everything that everyone's doing wrong right now. And every year it changes. It, it's really powerful. You get to connect with a lot of great people. Um, I, yeah, I couldn't praise that conference more. Uh, so we started from there discovering a, a lot of tools. And I'll get into some of them a little bit later, but we knew that in order to be a great agency, we had to take the best of all of the online tools and weed out the bad ones and use the right ones to help our clients. So we had, our job is literally to find the tools that work the best and find the people that need them the most and, and, and connect them together. And then we, I went to another conference uh, and we moved in here. So the other conference was on PPC and AdWords, which is, I'm discovering, it kind of, it's really a different wing of online advertising. We've talked about recently uh, outsourcing it or, or taking it off of our plate because we have too many kind of things going on. And AdWords is a lot different than Facebook marketing. And anyone that's tr doing one and says they can do the other is uh, is either not great at one or they're lying to you. Or it's, it's really hard to do both well at the same time. It's not impossible. Um, and I, I think I'm pretty good at both of them, but I'm not great at either of them. And when it comes down to it, I want to be great at Facebook advertising. So we're probably going to drop AdWords. So I, um, while I learned a lot at HeroConf on how people search in Google and how Google search works, um, it, it was uh, there. There was it was a very centric around uh, AdWords and actually being at uh, the conference. Then we got Infusionsoft. How many people here use a CRM? Yeah. Do you remember what that? Is? Yeah, CRM is a customer relationship management software. So what it does for you is as people kind of come into your website or marketing funnel or whatever it is, it, they are going to go to different pages. Um, well, for, for this CRM, uh, you'll, you'll be able to track their activities on the site. When they fill out a form, you've, you actually now can put that kind of to a name. And so every individual user is tracked across your site. You can send them emails when they visit certain pages you can, uh, it helps automate all sorts of email activities. 
and, and market to people and designate them at different stages of, of kind of a marketing funnel. So it helps you build a better relationship. So that's a customer relationship management, uh, kind of combined with email marketing and, and online marketing in general. It allows you to, it, it just allows you to connect with people at the right time. When you, it allows you to really hit the right opportunity and moment. And uh, we pay $350 a month for this one. And so it's, it's a, it, and it costs like $1,000, 1200 to set up or something like that. But it has immediately proven results. And we started with nothing, no list, nothing. If you have a, you know, a thousand users and you're not tracking them across your website, you're not tracking how they're engaging with you, you're not sending out weekly, monthly emails, you're missing out on opportunities to grow your brand. Yeah. Do you use Infusionsoft for your clients? We use it, yes, we do. We, we use it to send out uh, monthly newsletters to the clients. We also do kind of like follow-up campaigns, how are we doing campaigns, referral campaigns. Uh, Through your same account, do you have them set up their own? Oh, sorry, for our clients. Yeah, um, but right now, we haven't had any, any clients do that, but we would absolutely love our clients to be on Infusionsoft. We would be able to really kick butt if, if, we, uh, if we were able to work with them on that one. And that was, you know, we've thought about how to structure our business and, you know, uh, the clients that come into us and uh, potential clients and, and don't have any form of tracking, but still have like this giant email list. It's, it's really, it's an opportunity wasted for them. Years of data, marketing data, um, you know, rep getting more repeat customers, increasing your net promoter score, increasing all these engagement factors that we really want to do in order to drive our business forward. Without the CRM, you've, you've been missing out on those opportunities. The reason I ask is we work with a lot of autoresponders, and that seems to be the most professional one, quote unquote, that most bigger names use. However, it's a big bite for most businesses at the beginning. That's yeah, nice. yeah, it's a commitment, and it's confusing. That the the thousand dollars up front, or it might have been fifteen hundred, but if you just pretend like you're not interested, they'll mark it down for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good tip. And, yeah, and uh, I mean, it's just one of those clear-cut investments into your future. You know, you need to learn the software, you need to play around with it, tinker with it and become experts at it. You know, we, we all started our business thinking we were good at our one thing, and, but we all actually have to be good at CRM. We have to be good at customer service, we have to be good at managing our clients using our CRM, we have to, be, we have to understand our content and how to market it. There's a, there's a lot more things going on than what we thought we had to do when we started our business these days. Quick poker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, all right, so officially quit poker and, and took the plunge. I think we all kind of know what that's like when you're an entrepreneur or I guess it's called a wantrepreneur and you're looking at starting the business and you've been in another business for a long time. I knew for a while I wanted to get out and I needed to save up the right amount of money and make sure that I knew enough and had enough clients to, to make it a real thing. And when I was able to get the investment that locked in my ability to kind of take the leap and I move forward, so. And, and I, I don't know if anyone's in the process of starting their own business, but usually that point is very interesting in, in the life if you're starting a business. What, what uh, would you say, if you're comfortable saying this, what are the thoughts going through your mind when you're about the, I, well, you're at that point where you have to go, either I go full time or I don't, do I make, do I take the, I, the so. Risk? At, yeah, so playing poker for a living is way easier, or way harder than anything that I had to do uh, afterwards. So every decision that I've made in business has been a lot less stressful. That for me, it was easy. I know why it's hard though, but uh, but I I was so thrilled to be out, and my friends are playing at Ocean's Eleven tomorrow all day long, and they still don't understand how I could quit so easily. I'm like, it's easy. I have something I actually want to do with my life. I, the passion is gone. But on the, on the financial side, the swings of poker, uh, combined with the fact that you need a large bankroll, uh, it made it really easy because I just took that bankroll and I put it into my, I'm not making any money today and this is the money I'm drawing from account. And, uh, and, and so... But you, had, you had a safety net. Uh, a very small safety net. <laughs> but combined with that, with the investment and and we, we created a way to transfer over without, you know, what we, we moved into a smaller place, 
we got rid of a car. We we downsized big time. Um, I think if you, if you don't if you know if, if you haven't cried, sweat, or bled for your business, then you are not in business yet. So mm -hmm. it's really uh, it, it, there's a lot of pain that comes with it, but. Taking the leap was easy for me. I don't think it'll be as easy for other people. And, and it's definitely one of those moments, especially when, I mean, I look back, I had no idea what I was doing. I, I still don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> holy crap. So in summer, we, uh, my, my wife got third in the copywriting contest and went out to uh, New York to, to do this kind of conference, one day conference thing. We joined the SD Chamber, so if anybody is looking for business, uh, business to business leads, uh, the SD Chamber is a great, great place to start. I just came from a meeting there. I'm literally in a room with, with 12 potential clients and we're all just getting to know each other. It was a really, really great experience to just chat with people and it's you know very low pressure. We're not trying to sell anything to each other, we're just trying to get to know each other kind of thing, like these events, but SD Chamber is a great place to find uh, B2B leads in networking events. Definitely recommend them. Uh, it's really been doing great for us. So at this point, uh, just the, the last couple of months, we've, we've taken all of the tools that we tried and really fine-tuned it to a handful of tools that we use now for ourselves and our clients. We, uh, we also created our first lead magnet, I guess, which was the uh, this, the, I did a talk on it, the web press set up last time. We started advertising for our own business on AdWords and Facebook, and I started speaking, and uh, we really started pushing our blog content out, and I started doing a video series. By the way, I'm on YouTube. It's terrible. You should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, YouTube.com slash slash OPM. Do you have any problems starting to speak? Was that scary? Uh, I, I've, I've been wanting to speak for a while. I'm oh, still okay. really bad, as you can tell, as everyone here can tell. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get better. I need to get rid of my ums. I need to, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things I'm working on on the speech for. But um, it's having the courage to actually get on stage, most people would have a hard time with that. Forget about the ums. Right? It's liquid courage. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why there's beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's not for you. you. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the hardest part about speaking is always the first 30 seconds. And after that, it gets a lot easier for me, at least. And everything I'm telling you today, I, I could tell, you know, 100 times over. Um, so, so it's really easy to talk about. It's, and I'm, I'm not too embarrassed to make a fool of myself. Either, so that helps. Uh, we got certified with Digital Marketer. I'm going to tell you more about them later. I need to speed this up, by the way. We're going way too slow. Um, we are crushing in social media right now. It's from, you know, when you start churning the wheels and you're like, nothing's going on, nothing's going on, we are finally starting to take off on our social media channels, all thanks to this young lady uh, who's, who's doing a great job on Instagram and Twitter for us. Uh, we started, we did a promotional giveaway with SD Chamber. We are creating a product series for social media management that helps kind of like, we, we want to build a marketing funnel online that drive people, uh, and this could be similar to translation industry, similar to a lot of other industries, you know, starting with small products and working their way up to bigger products. Uh, we decided to never do white label services again, and this is a question you'll have to ask for your business industry. White label services are when a uh, third party, so if another agency comes to us and says, we're too busy, can you do this work under our name? It, it's not scalable, it's, it's just money is all it is, which is fine, money for work, but because you're in a services business, we decided we want to be the brand behind it, we want to be able to scale, we want to have referrals through our clients, we don't want to do work for somebody else and not get the credit. So we're done. Uh, and we have, we're setting ourselves up to, to scale pretty nicely, as well as working on the, uh, on the hiring front. So we're not really all here to start our own digital marketing agency, as we talked about. Um, we are here to become better at digital marketing. We want to become a digital marketing expert in one year or less. I could even say three months or less, maybe, depending on how much time you put into it. And I want to give you all the resources that you need to get there. And we have very little time to continue talking about this. So this is me one year ago with a small baby. Uh, he's gotten a little bigger now. And of course, I'm on my phone. <laughs> I'm on my phone because I have been subscribing to blogs 
and newsletters and email lists like mad because I knew that the best way to become a digital marketing expert in one year was to find all of the experts and learn everything from them. So I filled out this form. These guys are Social Media Examiner and they put a form at the end of every blog post so that you can join their blog. This is a really, really good idea if you're not doing it right now. There should be a form at the end of every blog post because if someone gets to the end of the blog post, they probably want more and they are ready to fill this out. So I filled out this form and I filled out a few more forms. <laughs> I filled out this many forms or more. Reach local, they're still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I filled out a lot of forms and I, I got a lot of opt-in. What, what do you guys see here? Can you read it? So what happened was I got a lot of crappy email lists and, and blogging lists. A lot of people wanted to sell to us. A lot of people were giving us just like regurgitated education, you know, like uh, something you can hear from somebody. So what I wanted to do was find the leading experts. So I wanted to turn this into this. Right, so we could see the, the signal in the noise. So I want to show you guys really quick the resources that I used to, to learn all this stuff. If you can't tell, it's not great. It's events, books, people, blogs, and courses. And th those are basically the five pillars of education that you can use across any industry to become an expert in it in a relatively short period of time. We all have the internet, and if we're dedicated enough, we can do it. Unless it's becoming a lawyer, right, Andrew? <laughs> so I want to start with some of the people, but it's going to kind of hodgepodge together. Uh, the people that you guys all need to follow, these are the things to write down. Finally, we're getting into it. This guy is a genius. This is Rand Fishkin. If you don't know who he is, he started SEO Moz, which is now called Moz.com. Everything he says is gold. Uh, he, I, he is an SEO expert, but it really extends to marketing. But he knows how to structure websites. He, he just does all these really cool tricks with link. I don't even know what he does. But uh, he is a, is a cool, cool dude. You need to follow him on moz.com slash blog. This is his Whiteboard Friday. And he also, uh, this is an event that we did not go to, but we probably will go to, called MozCon. And the, this is how you learn, right? This is how you learn to become an expert in digital marketing is you watch every one of these videos, you read every one of these posts, and you go to this conference. And so we're going to do that for six people. This is the first one. Uh, it, it's really, that's, that's the secret. The secret to success is figuring out the success of other people and stealing that a little bit and building on it. Community. Uh, this is his blog. This podcast is literally a, in a free at, like sneak peek into what people had to pay thousands of dollars for. So he brought a whole bunch of people in to do this startup school and then he recorded the sessions and put some of them online. So it's not an ongoing podcast, but if you haven't listened to the startup, startup school podcast yet, this it's just great for any business. I mean, it gets your brain going. It really does. Guy Kawasaki is the king of social media. He posts how many times on Twitter a day? Like 120 probably or more. Um, he, he said, he said if, you, if you see this, me posting the same content twice, then you're probably on Twitter too often. So the, he posts a lot. He posts some of the same things, which is totally fine on social channels since you're only reaching 2% to, to 10% of your audience really uh, with any given post. He has written a lot of books. He started out at Apple, and now he's a brand evangelist for Canva.com. If you guys aren't using Canva.com, you gotta use Canva.com. It's so easy to create graphics. It is, it is just a, it's taking digital marketers and designers and smushing them together. I know if you're, if you're a great graphic designer, you know, it still works faster sometimes than Photoshop. So it has its short, shortfalls, but it, Canva.com is where anybody can go to create the graphic they need. Next up we have Jay Bayer. He is another social king and he's extremely good at speaking. If you can ever catch a Jay Bayer conference uh, where he's keynoting, headlining, or any kind of talk with him, I, I definitely recommend it. I think he also does some periscoping, so you can find him online. A lot of these guys do actually. And he has written a book called Utility, and he's coming out with a book called Hug Your Haters, which is going to 
really open people's minds to how to respond in the online reputation management industry and, and what they're doing wrong today. I mean, it's, it was so great to see him in the social media marketing world. He showed us a sneak peek into that and, um, and we got ahead of the curve on online reputation management in our industry because uh, of his insights. So I also recommend going to youtube.com slash jthayer and watching his J Today TV series or it's not really a TV series, it's a, it's a podcast series, and you can also follow it as a podcast. Um, it's three to five minute clips that just are inside his head in the marketing world. Everything this guy says is gold. These guys are the kings. So the, after that, I wanna show you some of the courses that we took. So with those guys, following them is really crucial because you get to stay on the leading edge of all of your industries, and you can just take those six guys, you don't have to take all the noise that I took before. You can take everything they said and, uh, and know that you are literally listening to the best advice in the industry. Here are some other ways to pick up additional skills. Digitalmarketer.com is a gold mine. <laughs> it's, they have so much good stuff. They will literally sell you a course on how they sold you that course. <laughs> and I took it and it changed, it changed how, how I advertise on Facebook. It was really good. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I paid for a subscription to digitalmarketer.com. Yeah, me and, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went through the same troubles Derek had. So like, at first, like, there's so much junk on the internet. Like, it's like you don't even know where to go to. And then when I found digitalmarketer.com, I was like, why couldn't this just be there on the first page of Google? You know, like when I was first searching, like this would have saved me like months of my time. Um, yeah, it's worth it, especially if you have like, uh, or you're in the Facebook group too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The community is awesome. Yeah, they they have an amazing community. They have so much amazing courses you can take right on their site. They uh, will. They are going to and and once you get in here, if, if you know if you want to learn more about digital marketing, email marketing, customer acquisition, all of the good stuff, uh, getting leads for your own business and what worked for them and their clients and their partner businesses, um, they're gonna sell you on it too. They, they know how to make their money and I've, I've gone in there you know, downloading literally a free lead magnet from them going, I'm not gonna pay anything. <laughs> then, I, I, then I buy the $7 upsell. Now I'm over here at the monthly subscription. I'm like, these guys just like owned me. But they did it in a way where it was so good. They provided so much value, I couldn't say no. And I think that's what we all really should learn from them, which is you have to provide 10 times the value that your, your cost is at in order to get the kind of sales you want, especially online when you're, when you're advertising marketing online because you are casting a wide net even when it's a, a narrow wide net. You're bringing a lot of people to your site and in order to capture them all, you need to provide 10 times more value than the, the price of the product you're, you're selling. That way they can undeniably say, I have to buy this. And they buy it and they continue to buy things from you in the future. Because once a customer, always a customer, maybe always a customer. <laughs> so Digital Marketing Labs, which is the $50 a month subscription, $40, $50 a month subscription. And then they have office, office hours where you can actually talk with their, their experts. They have a bunch of things that you can just do there. It's like unlimited. This is the gold, the gold mine of digital marketing. Other things that we uh, subscribe to, is Social Media Marketing Society. Uh, we, since we are a subscriber and a partner with them, if you if you are looking at them and you would like to join, if you would if you want to use our affiliate link, it is at absolutely no cost to you. It does make us a little bit of money. We only promote them because they are really good. We don't really care about the money. The these guys. I, I don't know what to say. They, they do social media marketing world. They are the leading experts in all things social media related. They can tell you about Periscope versus Meerkat, but on the, like, the day after, it's uh, Meerkat and Periscope have both launched. They can tell you what's working today, what's going to work tomorrow, all of their events. They have an online conference, by the way, going on very, very soon. It's a 30-day online conference with tons and tons of speakers. So if you need to get up to speed in social media, social media management, uh, and, and, and social media marketing, then you should probably subscribe to that. It's like 500 bucks, but I promise if you go to at least five of the talks, you're gonna find 
five thousand dollars worth of value there for how to market your business on social media. It's called the Social Media Summit. Social Media Summit. Thank you. Yes. yes. And copy blogger is another great one. I haven't gotten deep into copy blogger yet myself, but I'm looking forward to it. This is for the copywriters, the SEO, the content marketers, the bloggers. Uh, you know, and we are all those people now. We, we're really not as segmented as we used to be. You have to be all those people. So you can, uh, there's a free subscription and an upgraded subscription here. They give away a lot of great stuff and you can, uh, and you can check out their site for great courses and more information. They also have really cool tools for your website. We stopped using one of them called Scribe recently, but, uh, but it's still a pretty good tool overall. Udemy is the go-to place for all sorts of educational stuff. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a lot of courses online, and when I started finding digital marketing and the others, I stopped looking at Udemy for answers, but there are still a lot of great courses on Udemy. These are four of my favorites from the ones that we took. Um, Small Business Lead Generation with Scott Brighton, uh, Britton is, it, this is great if you're going to cold call, cold email, warm email, it talks about email responses, how to structure your, your phrasing, how to talk to people in email. That, that was, I think, what I got. What else do you think? I can say that's a pretty good yeah. summation. <laughs> Obviously, we already talked about Moz. Everything they do is gold, and that training course was, was just good. This is like the, the beginner's course, and there's an advanced one. It's just so that you're, every business owner, anybody that's looking at their website and their analytics, how do I make my business better tomorrow? You need the crash course in, in SEO. You, you have to know what's going on. Google AdWords for beginners, if you're gonna get into it, uh, the one thing I can say about AdWords is that if you're going to spend you know, over $1,000 a month, you should probably hire someone else, uh, unless you're, you're the expert, and maybe even before that number, because if you're gonna spend $100 a month, you're probably gonna do it so wrong that it doesn't work. So th there's kind of a give and take there. You kind of need, uh, you might wanna just hire an expert. If you wanna get into it, it was a good course. Uh, also, Corey Rabazinski is a great person to go to if you want someone to ma manage your Google AdWords account. Copywriting secret Secrets with Len Smith. He talked a lot about the psychology of copywriting and how to get inside people's heads and send the right message, uh, headlines, all sorts of good stuff. So that was you to me. Video Traffic Academy. This is specifically for anybody that needs to stand in front of a camera. So how to get better at speaking, talking in front of the camera, doing YouTube video courses, uh, YouTube marketing. To get ranked on YouTube well, you'd want to take a course from James Wedmore at Video Traffic Academy. So I'm going to run through really quick some additional resources that, uh, by the way, all these slides will be totally available to you guys. So that's why I don't, I don't want to touch on too much. So I already, we, start, we talked about some of these events, but Social Media Marketing World must go to. Inbound is really good. Content Marketing World, if you're writing, if you're doing good blog content, you could visit that one. MozCon for SEO. Growth Marketing Conference for startups or anybody just at the start of their business. This is great for landing page optimization. Um, this one is run by Digital Marketer. So, and it's here in San Diego. Traffic and Conversion Summit. Everybody, right? Yep. So going to that, HeroConf is strictly PPC. Icon is done by Infusionsoft. South by Southwest is for, um, it's, it's for media. It's like for video and, and other media sources, but it seems like a lot of marketers like to go there. I don't know a ton about it, but I put it on at the end because everyone else loved it. Everything else I totally uh, recommend, but I, I'm sure that one's great as well. Here's a bunch of podcasts. Um, like I said, Mad Marketing Podcast, you have to. Startup School, if you haven't done it yet, you have to. Pat Flynn operates out of this office. I met him the other day. He is a uh, smart passive income. He, he, he just, he, yeah, he produced a lot of good, good stuff. Entrepreneur on Fire, John Lee Dumas, he also operates uh, in San Diego, and he's a good guy. Uh, digital marketer, so forth and so on. Tim Ferriss Show, Tim Ferriss is a genius, but you get more like real world stuff from him than, than necessarily business insights, I'd say. Um, and we'll leave it at that. And some of the people that didn't make the list of the top six for you, these are other people that you can follow based on what industry or th uh, topic you wanna focus on. One of the things I didn't mention actually at the top of this was what I did for learning in our business was extremely specific to what I needed to learn right away. 
So if I needed to learn AdWords in 30 days, I put it off for 30 days and I learned something else today. So think about the most important thing that you can learn today and learn that. What's the one thing that'll change things the most? It might be content marketing. It might be SEO. Think about where your business is at and what's the one thing that you can learn today and put everything else off until tomorrow. Don't necessarily just take whatever falls on your plate today uh, as what you should learn because we've only got so much time and yeah, we gotta, we gotta get the most important things done. So, and here's a bunch of books that we totally probably read. <laughs> these are, I've read almost all these, and they're really, really good ones. This is a Tim Ferriss one. I haven't read this one. The one thing, yeah, is what we were talking about earlier is, is about figuring out, the, and what I was just talking about, the one thing that you need to do today that makes tomorrow easier, and the one thing that you need to know, learn today that grows your business. So that's events, books, people, blogs, and courses, your resources. Now you can play the game. <laughs> so uh, I'm Derek Haney. I'll, we'll put these up at uh, splash.com slash sddme. Uh, if you guys care to follow us, we throw out more tips over there. And I am asking you guys for one favor. On Monday, I am going to start periscoping at 4 o'clock every Monday. If you guys want to join me, Periscoping is live, live streaming video on your phone, online, however you want to view it. Uh, <laughs> I, I am looking forward to it. I'm expecting no one to show up. So have, you, have you looked at the other platforms? Uh, you mean just Meerkat? Meerkat, Blab. I haven't looked at no Blab. Meerkat. Uh, this is your favorite so far? You're, you're talk, I mean, you are a live streaming uh, expert at this point, right? But you no, use, use Google Hangouts, right? Yeah, Google Hangouts. I, just, I get enough stuff thrown at me every day. Check this out. Check that out. Check yeah. that out. I, I haven't used it yet, so I'm going to fumble around on Periscope on Monday. Periscope's <laughs> awesome. Every day. <laughs> you Periscope every day or you watch? I Periscope every day about like between 6 and 7 in the morning. <laughs> Who the, oh, well, maybe some East Coasters. Well, people in London. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, yeah, what's cool is that even if you missed it, you can watch it from the beginning later, right? So you can you can either join in the conversation or watch what was Periscope. Check out Blab. I've heard of that one yesterday, okay. I think. I, I'm, I'm committed now. But, uh, no, 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 I know. What, but, one, and what I'm doing here, by the way, in case you didn't know, Marcus Sheridan says that the best way to get uh, to get moving on your content goals uh, is to tell somebody else. So I'm telling you guys that by Monday at 4 p.m. I'll be ready to Periscope, and I'm just going to talk digital marketing stuff, whatever anybody wants to talk about. Sure. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I just went blank his name now, but that that Twitter's you know the all day long. Oh, guy, yeah. guy, How guy, guy. guy. How does he do that? I I marketed. I have a have a business that I uh, market wine clubs, and I was. I had a, a really good program set up where scheduled twi tweets went out and everything and all day long. And I got busted, kicked off of Twitter for a while for having too many tweets. Not if you're a guy, they won't kick that off. Um, I yeah. know, but, but how, how, yeah, it. I'm not, I'm not sure why you got kicked off. Are, is that the well, exact there reason? Were, actually, there were several of us that did. There were other people that I knew that we were all doing this program together for all of our businesses. There were two or three of us that got kicked off. So, Same content? No, no. There's, Different businesses. Yeah. I, I'd like to see the email they sent you. There's a lot of reasons you can get kicked off there. Uh, sending too frequently isn't these days the real reason. If they think it's a spam account, they're going to block you. So is the content good? Are you sending the people to the same page every time? Are you sending the same message every time? Uh, you know, I think quality is what they were yeah. they're looking at because uh, Twitter and Facebook, they're uh, really all social platforms. They, their, their goal is to keep people on their site. And to do that, they want everybody else producing the best content. If they think that something that you're doing is spammy or um, a little bit underhanded or anything like that, mm -hmm. they, they can give you the boot. But yeah. it, it may, you may have fallen into some like uh, accidental kind of category, and I but I just recommend. They let me back on. They didn't kick me off for very long. They okay. Let me back. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But it was kind of like giving you a warning. You should be able to you know? send a new tweet out every two minutes without really ever yeah. getting booted. Sometimes people can flag you 
flag and, of spam. Uh, as spam. Uh, so as then, a spam. Uh, that could have been. Uh, yeah, it, with direct message campaigns yeah. as well as act campaigns, you uh, yeah. you can overdo it. Um, uh, and I do. I flag people because there, there's a, on Twitter. If, you, if no one, if you haven't been on Twitter lately, every day there's someone telling you they can get you a thousand followers for five dollars. Well, all, all you should always flag, block all those people. It's a little bit of a waste of your time, but at least you'll never hear from them again uh, because they'll just open up a new account. But yeah. The, yeah, those those followers will not help your business in any way. Um, Same for Facebook. Yeah. Oh, Facebook. It's even worse actually because with Facebook, when you send out your organic posts, it's going to go to fake people instead of real people, and you just wasted uh, you know a large percentage of. Everything. So Facebook, it's really, really bad. Twitter, it's kind of bad, um, but both of them, it's, it's, it's just you shouldn't buy, you shouldn't ever buy followers anywhere. But technically, we all buy followers. So to, to separate them out, you shouldn't buy thousand dollars for five dollars. Thousand followers are five dollars. You need to go out and find the people that are interested in your business, and by doing that, it costs you some sort of technical time, monetary value, etc. And so that's the cost of finding people. Is is in there. All right, I'm serious about this, guys. I need your help. Someone join me. <laughs> uh, there's not that many people that go live, so like, if you go live, chances are you're gonna get 10 to 20 people viewing you. So I get 10 to 20 people whenever I go live. Um, it's just by a matter of not that many people like actually are willing to go live on camera, but a lot of people are want to observe. So you uh, have yeah, that different thing, content creators, and then you have spectators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 5%, 95%. Yeah. So we get the 95% to <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's hard. It's hard to, uh, hard to commit to doing that. I, yeah. like, like Renee asked me earlier, how do I get comfortable at it? My strategy is just to stand up in front of a lot of people a lot of different times until it's not a big deal. Uh, and, and, and I'll let you know when that happens. <laughs> All right, that's it for me, guys. Let's uh, let's go ahead and. Uh,